everyone and welcome to our YouTube channel Mama's the Word. I'm Eva Danielle and my son Gabe is off doing all the awesome things that three-year-olds do and so I just want to come to you guys by myself with a quick video as to the things that I am planning to take to the hospital when I go into labor. So um, if you guys are first time moms, second time moms, fifth time moms, and ever had a question about what other people decide to pack in their bags, I just decided to share with you guys some of the things um, that I um, decided to take both for myself and for our little princess that will be coming. Um, some of it I took from different lists from researching on the internet and some of it I just remembered from the first time when when you know I had Gabe and a lot of the things are things that I wish I would have had and I just didn't know any better to bring them and so like I said I just wanted to share really quickly with you guys some of the items that I will be packing both for myself and for our sweet baby girl so if this is something that you're interested in watching stay tuned and I'll be right back Bye -bye. So here's a picture of my hospital bag. It's nothing fancy, nothing special. It's actually my old work bag from when I was a flight attendant. So again, it's nothing fancy, nothing special, but it's going to get the job done. So starting with me, in no particular order, I'm just going to show you guys some of the things, like I said, that I felt um, was important to have both for comfort and just for utility purposes. And a lot of these things are things that I brought to the hospital when I had Gabe and some of the things I kind of added along the way that I'm like man I wish I would have had that so anyway here we go here's what I'm packing in my suitcase so first things first and it's so crazy that this is the actual bucket I used when I gave birth to Gabe but basically it's just a little goodie bucket and I am filling it with candy that I purchased from Dollar Tree. I mean, if you wanna to go to the grocery store and purchase candy, you can. But just little, you know, snack size um, candies. And it's really for the nurses. Um, this went over very well last time um, when I had Gabe. Um, you know, I kinda of let them know from the beginning, you're welcome to take it. When they come in the room, they kinda, of, you know, pick a piece of it. And so it's just gonna be sitting there, basically by the sink when they first walk in. And I just felt like it was a really nice gesture to have something there for the nurses um, who are gonna be helping to take care of Gabe and I. And like I said, it went over very well. And I got this little bucket from Dollar Tree. I started to go get a pink one, but I'm like, you know, it's candy, who cares what it's in? So I just got this. Um, you know, like I said, I got a little bit of candy from Dollar Tree. If you want, you can get it from the grocery store. Um, I'll probably just fill it up the one time and just have it there for mainly the nurses or anybody who comes to visit. But more than likely, the nurses will understand it's for them. And like I said, it's just a very nice gesture. Um, the second thing I have is actually a towel from home now I didn't bring my best towel as you can see I brought a nice brown one um, because let's face it um, when you are able to shower if you're able to shower there's gonna be all kinds of stuff leaking and coming out and so I didn't want to bring you know my nice plush cream color towel but at the same time hospital towels tend to be really small and itchy and so I wanted to make sure that I had something um, that was gonna at least cover me and give me the absorbency that I really like and again at the same time if it gets totally gross and messed up it's not my best towel so I can easily just discard it and get a new one but I wanted to make sure I brought my own towel which I didn't do that last time um, another thing which you may or may not need um, is hand sanitizer um, obviously when you're coming in and out of the hospital room they do have them on the wall but in case somebody kind of misses it I do want to have this very close um, you know especially for myself as well if I'm not able to get out of the bed quickly I want to be able to sanitize my hands so again that's from Dollar Tree bottle hand sanitizer goes a long way especially if you're going to be having visitors they should wash their hands anyway but just in case someone gets lost in the sauce and tries to come reaching for the baby uh-uh it's right here wash your hands sanitize your hands and we'll all be happy um something else that i decided to bring which again i forgot last time like i thought i did so good last time but it was so many things i'm like dang it why not think of it are shower shoes um you know although you're in a hospital other people have been there before you it tends to be clean but at the same time it doesn't and so you get these nice shower shoes again from dollar tree walmart anywhere um this is not something that you have to spend a whole bunch of money for you don't have to go out and get havianas <laughs> just get whatever these are and so that way when it's time to take your shower you can just pop them on and when it's time to go you can just chunk them so shower shoes and 
a sack to put them in and this is just the old grocery bag next thing are actually slippers um i did not have these last time either i did have the kind of grippy socks and when my water broke you know everything kind of just went all over my socks so i ended up with the hospital stuff and i have a particularly small feet even when they're swollen and so the socks would come off and it was just yeah it wasn't a good time so anyway i decided to get these slippers and fortunately um because it is a summertime these were kind of off season and so i think i paid like four bucks for them so you know if you check your lo local marshalls or ross or wherever and see if they have um slippers like these on discount because it is the summertime for me at least right now and so i do plan on wearing these you know when i need to take that lap you know right before they let you out and they want you to kind of walk around i do plan on wearing these outside of the room and you know even if i have to get up real quick and use the restroom or something like that and again because they were so cheap if you're concerned about germs and being you know in the hospital with them I didn't pay a whole lot for them, so if they need to be chunked, then they can be chunked. Next thing is a nice, comfy go-home dress, and I'll see if I can show this for you guys. So this is actually a dress that I'm currently wearing at the moment. I do have it in my bag already because if you do remember, I told you that we've had um, a few scares with preterm labor, and so I really wanted to make sure that I had my bag packed. As a matter of fact, what I've been doing is every time I have to go to a prenatal visit now, I just go ahead and pack my bag or put my bag in the car um, simply because our um, OB is in the same building as the actual hospital where I'll be giving birth. And so just as a, you know, Murphy's Law, you would rather have it and not need it than need it and not have it. I just go ahead and put the suitcase in the car every time I go to a prenatal visit just in case because last time they admitted me directly from the visit and I kind of got caught without having anything. So anyway, like I said, a nice comfy go home dress um, because, you know, I still be very swollen even after giving birth. And I know that if this dress fits now and I'm 34 weeks as of right now, once it's all said and done, I'll definitely be able to get into it. It's easy to pull on, easy to get off, easily boob accessible. And so, yeah, nice comfy go home outfit for myself. Um, this, I did not think about this last time, but this time around I am prepared. I am actually going to bring my pillow from home only because it's very comfortable. Um, you know, and when you're in an uncomfortable state, whatever you can do to make yourself comfortable actually goes a long way. Um, I will say when I went into preterm labor a couple weeks ago, you know, trying to ask them for more pillows because they kind of give you those little marshmallow pillows that don't really do anything it was really really tough and so even when you know the contraction stopped and I was still there for monitoring you know it was very hard to sleep because these pillows were I mean they weren't really pillows so anyway my plan is to bring my own pillow from home but I'm going to make sure that I utilize this different color pillowcase I'm not gonna go in there with a white pillowcase for a couple of reasons I don't want anyone to think that my Tempur-Pedic pillow belongs to the hospital and number two you know with the white pillowcase again things tend to get a little bit gnarly um, even after you've given birth and so you know clearance pillowcase it's gray it's different color if I need to get rid of it afterwards because it's gotten gnarly then I can now some people talk about, you know, oh, this is something good to have. Um, I read about them and I always said, oh, I'd like to have my own birthing gown. Now, this particular brand, um, and this is by, let's see if I get the name of it. This is by Pretty Pushers. Now, they tend to be really pricey. Um, and I'll put the links in the description box below as to where you can buy them. But basically, they are um, labor and delivery gowns. And this particular one is kind of like a purple and gray. It's a halter top that goes around the neck. Um, it opens up in the back for easy epidural access. Um, you know, if you want to do skin to skin afterwards, these can easily let down. Um, there's also... I want to say an opening in the front um, for monitoring. So basically, it's supposed to give you basically a more upscale, 
um, birthing apparel than your typical um, hospital gown. And so, like I said, these are really pricey, but I lucked out and I got this brand new. It still had the tags attached. I got it brand new from the Goodwill store and I figured, okay, if I don't get to use it, that's fine. But if I do get to use it, how cool would that be to basically push in style? So again, this is from um, Pretty Pushers and it's a labor and delivery gown. And so I don't know if you guys can see that, but basically this flap comes open and you're able to um, have the monitors attached. So it's supposed to be hospital approved. I mean, it may be, you know, unnecessary, but you know, you never know. So again, I'd rather have it and not need it than need it and not have it. You know, if you don't want to pay the price, I think the last time I saw it, it was on buybuybaby.com for like $99. Yeah. Um, you can always check your local consignment store. You can check your um, online resale sites such as Mercari or Poshmark. But like I said, I looked up and found this at my local Goodwill. Brand new, so nobody ever pushed in it. So I figured I'd try it out. Um, then I also have um, just a couple pairs of comfy PJs. So again, I do plan on breastfeeding just like I did with Gabe and so I wanted to make it um, nursing accessible. So this is like, you know, a, a, a pajama set. It's got the soft cotton um, tank as well as the pants. And so I figured a couple things. If I'm able to have a vaginal delivery, which that is the plan, then I can wear the pants. If not, and I have to have a C-section, that's still fine. Um, I believe with Gabe, I did have the Foley catheter for a while, and so obviously you can't have pants on with that. But just in case, again, I'd rather have it and not need it than need it and not have it. And I just thought that these were um, super comfy. And so what I did was I went to my local Goodwill and you know to their pajama department and you can actually find a lot of nice um sleepwear sets for really cheap some of them are even brand new some of them are slightly used but again um in a situation like that you want something comfy you want something nice if you're going to have visitors coming in but i didn't want to spend an arm and a leg so that's one set of um pjs that i had another set so we talked about in case I had to have a C-section and I had the catheter and all that going on. So obviously I can't wear pants with that. And so this is actually a nightgown set that comes with a robe. And again, guys, isn't that cute? I got this from my local Goodwill as well. And so I think the set with the robe was $5.99. And so again, because I do plan on breastfeeding, I wanted to make sure that it was um, easily accessible to my boobs. And so everything kind of either has buttons or it's V-neck. And so with this one, um, it does have the nightgown if I'm not able to wear pants. And then in case I get visitors or I need to go walking in the hospital hall, I do have this nice robe that I can just throw over it. And it actually came with it. And last but not least, again, from Goodwill as well. Can y'all tell this is a trend? Like Goodwill, Goodwill, Goodwill. Um, this is also a nightgown. Once again, uh, nursing friendly. I can unbutton the buttons. This one comes down um, below the knees. And so even if I do have visitors that come, you know, I don't have to worry about them seeing my goodies. Um, if I do happen to have a catheter, I don't have to worry about it being caught up in pants. And so this is just a nice, um, departure away from again the hospital gowns that kind of leave your butt exposed you know that aren't really comfy and so I'm hoping that I will be lucid enough to be able to change into one of these outfits um but again rather have it and not need it than need it and not have it all that good stuff so again goodwill so if it comes to the point where you know oh my god I didn't use any of this stuff it's from goodwill it still um, will come in handy when we do get home because like I said, I'm not at my house, I'm at my parents' house, and I still wanna make sure that I am um, comfortable as well as presentable. Um, let's see. Now, a couple other things that I wanted to make sure. Now, I just stuck a few maxi pads in here. Now, the hospitals typically do provide you with like these huge diaper-like pads as well as these mesh panties. I just remember them, and again, it depends on your hospital. I just remember from the last place that I gave birth, and it's a completely different hospital, but I just remember them not fitting very well. The mesh panties were very large on me. Um, typically, 
you know in my pregnancies I'm pretty much all stomach and so they kind of fell off they didn't really um, stay up and so I felt very uncomfortable there were times where I had a couple accidents and so I'm just going to just because I don't know what kind of undergarments this hospital will provide I'm just gonna bring a few of my own um, pads and these are super with wings the ones that the hospital gives it kind of sits under you like I said for me it was very uncomfortable because they were too big and they were so big that they didn't really um protect me because they were sliding everywhere so I just decided to throw a couple of maxi pads in here just in case theirs doesn't work but I mean I'm gonna try theirs first um because basically you're paying for it um again socks um the hospital socks, like I said, don't work for me because they're always too big and I always end up losing one. So I decided to bring my own socks. And this time I'm going to bring three pairs of socks because last time I bought like two pairs of socks and one pair of socks and they got totally messed up once my water broke. So I've got two pairs of socks that actually have the grippy bottoms. And I've also got these kind of knee high socks that don't. Um, worst case scenario, the hospital socks can go over these. And so that way it kind of gives my foot extra traction grip I don't know whatever but I wanted to make sure I still have my socks and then if you remember I do have my slippers so I'm not gonna be barefoot made sure I brought my own soap hospital provides soap but it's normally this little bitty tiny bar and it dries your skin out and so I just decided to bring my own soap chapstick um yeah kind of self-explanatory I did not have that last time and my lips were on fire hospital air tends to be very dry you're laboring you're doing all kind of stuff and so the last thing you want is dry lips so um Dollar Tree got my Blistex and I'm good to go whatever chapstick you like of course my trusty toothbrush um again hospital will probably provide undergarments however I don't know how they're going to work for me so clearance at Walmart 448 I just got some large briefs that if they get messed up, I'm not going to cry about it. I didn't go to Victoria's Secret, but I just wanted something that was going to give me a little more, um, I guess, the feeling of being protected and not leaking everywhere. Um, I've got some facial wipes just in case, you know, it's one of those days where I just don't feel like getting up, but at least I can refresh and wipe my face, and especially if company is going to be coming. I can refresh real quick and I don't look like one of the walking dead. Um, so yeah, facial wipes. Um, we've also got, and I had these from when I gave birth to Gabe, a few, uh, nursing bras. And so there are some people that don't like to wear nursing bras. I just felt like, um, my boobs felt a lot more comfortable with something to kind of lift them up because they do get so heavy when your milk does come in. And so, um, yeah, I plan on wearing these, uh, after I give birth to kind of give me a little bit of support deodorant a few baby wipes just in case so again the hospital provides a lot of this stuff but you know it may not be your type or your hospital may not provide exactly what you need so I didn't want to go overboard with bringing a lot of my own things but at the same time I wanted to have something just in case you know it took a while for them to give that to me or they didn't have exactly what I wanted um, the other thing I'm bringing is this is from Era Organics and it's Mommy Balm and it's soothing and moisturizing for uh, breastfeeding balm for cracked, irritated skin. And this actually came from my last bump box and so I'm going to bring it just in case. The hospital I gave birth to last time didn't have lanolin to give out and it wasn't until I got home that I actually got the relief of it. And so I want to make sure I bring this on my own this time just in case they don't this time as well. And so, you know, your hospital may provide it. You may have some at home, you may want to buy some. But I know, um, you know, in the first couple weeks of breastfeeding, your, your nipples are just really, really tender and cracked and chafed and all that kind of stuff. And so it's really, really um, soothing to put like a, a balm on it. So I'm going to bring my own. If they have some they can provide to me, then great couple other things and then I'll be done with my bag earrings um, I normally have my trusty hoops in but when you're in the midst of that you know you don't want hoops in your ear and so I just wanted to you know bring some studs just so I feel you know a little bit girly after it's all said and done I also brought a handy dandy emergency charger now in this particular hospital the um, 
outlets are kind of few far and in between and so if I get into a situation where I'm not ready to be away from my phone I do have this on standby and basically it's one of those emergency chargers where you charge it up and then you can hook it up to your phone it'll give your phone a nice boost so I'm making sure that I keep this in my bag as a just in case um, but I am gonna also bring my normal phone charger um, to make sure that I have to share those special moments to keep you know family and friends who are not close updated um, but you want to make sure you have that let's see I've also got lotion of my choice in here and again hospitals do typically provide you with kind of like a hygiene kit you've got you know generic toothpaste generic deodorant generic mouthwash a toothbrush but I mean it's the same standard stuff they get to everybody just in case you don't have it at all um, but I prefer to have my own so I am bringing my own lotion um, you know and if they provide me with something great but I'd rather have mine that kind of makes my skin actually feel moisturized and not like I'm just slathering on something that's really watery uh, another thing that I am bringing that I did last time that was really really helpful um, because it can be you know a long process I'm bringing um, entertainment so for me I really like to color and when I was in the antipodum unit I had a lot of time to color especially not being able to get out of bed you know you got the catheter attached you're waiting on the drips to finish and so I spent a lot of time uh, one of them I finished coloring and so if you got something that you're into whether it's knitting or coloring you know word search or whatever you know just pack it in your bag you know just in case things don't go um, very very quickly um, you want to be able to kind of pass the time and kind of get your mind off of uh, any pain or discomfort that you may be feeling. And last but not least, one of the things that I absolutely wish that I had um, last time was actually um, an extra, my suitcase wants to act up, was actually an extra blanket. Now, I got this blanket for, it was less than five bucks. Um, we had a... Toys R Us that was closing near us and so I would go there when they were you know doing their 50% off 60% off 7% off and they had these nice plush blankets um, that were less than five bucks and so I decided to snag one because as we all know it tends to get um, kind of cold in hospitals and so I know for me last time I went through these periods where I was really really hot and then I was freezing and so um, rather than trying to hunt down additional blankets I decided to bring my own it's super super soft I've already washed it and so I want to take this with me to have just in case so um, yeah those are all the things that I'm gonna bring um, in my bag those are the things that I kind of got prepared um, I am going to put this all back in so that way my bag stays repaired. Um, one of the other things I did go ahead and do was I did go ahead and get my hair um, rebraided. My hair is natural and I just didn't feel like having to style you know my own hair um, in the midst of all that and so again because we've been kind of up and down as to actually when she will get here I just decided to go ahead um, while things were rather calm somewhat calm I can't say they're totally calm but I just would rather while things were somewhat calm to go ahead and you know get this done and it's out the way I'm also trying to keep up with my girly maintenance while I can so that way when I go in if it's unexpected if it's tonight you know I'm not like dang it I wish I would have painted my toes or I wish I would have cleaned up a little whatever so whatever you're into I would say you know once you hit that 34 35 week mark just go ahead and start you know trying to be proactive with those things because you really don't know um, when your little one is going to arrive and then two because I am also taking care of a toddler it's just a lot easier to stay ahead of things rather than um, be reactive um, because you know from day to day he could be having a fantastic day and allow me to get things done or we could be having a really crappy day and just don't want to let me do nothing so again for me um being the mother of a toddler and also in a situation where it really could be any day even though it's not her due date it's just easier to always kind of be as ready as um i can 
Hey guys, really quick, I almost forgot, but while I was in the middle of editing the video, I'm like, oh, there are a couple things that I really wanted to mention that, um, although they're not already in my hospital bag, I do plan on taking them because they are things I use on a daily basis. And so what I'm hoping is that we're not in such a rush that I forget them, but just in case, um, I just want to show you guys some of the other things that I am going to take along with me. So obviously I have my hair in a protective style, which is braids right now. However, just because it's in braids doesn't mean that I don't have to maintain it and so again just like your lips and your skin tend to get dry especially in a hospital setting your hair will do the same thing as well as your scalp and so what I use basically like every other day um, is this ditch the itch bamboo basil and peppermint with aloe and shea anti-itch serum and it's by Talia Wajib and it's specifically for people using protective styles and I tried to hold something up against it so you guys can see but that's what it looks like and I got it from my local beauty supply, but I'll make sure that I put the uh, link in the description box. And so basically I use this on my scalp to make sure that my scalp is well moisturized and maintained. Um, also up and down my braids because obviously my hair is in here and I don't want my hair to dry out. I use this Coco Shea spray by As I Am. Um, they're also a really good company for those of us that like to use um, natural hair products. It's a spray um, moisturizer with coconut oil, African shea butter, and vegetable glycerin. And so basically I use the Talia Wajid oil on my scalp. I use the Coco Shea spray um, on the top of my head and also up and down my braids. Um, another thing that I use to maintain my hair is going to be my Hicks Edges, so my Edge Pomade. So again, even you know with something like this, you still want to look presentable, at least I do. And so I'll take this, I'll probably put a little bit in a plastic bag so I don't have to bring this big thing, but I'll take um, some of my Hicks Edge Pomade as well as my Edge Brush. It's not an Edge Brush, I think they use actually clean clippers, but I use it for my edges, or you can use a toothbrush if you want to. But anyway, I'll use that to kind of put my edges down. And then at night, just like at home, you know, I have my scarf to keep my braids tied down. So that way in the midst of all that going on, I don't necessarily have to have frizzy hair. And then too, it will help to keep my hair out of the way. So actually for these, I use a do-rag on top and then a bonnet to actually hold the rest of them in there. And then last but not least, I do have a hair tie. Um, obviously this part right here is tied back. If I were to take the current hair tie off, it would kind of hang down like this, which on a regular day is not a problem, but in the midst of, you know, labor and delivery, even after, I probably won't want it, you know, hanging down toward my face too much, or I can even pull all of it back. So I am gonna bring a couple hair ties with me. Um, a few other things I'm gonna bring, I mean, here lately, I don't really get into wearing a whole lot of makeup. I do know how to beat my face, but um, yeah, lately I just I have not been in the mood. It's just been too hot. And I don't have time and so I probably will be feeling the same way um, once I'm in the hospital but one of the things I do utilize um, you know I utilize my normal face wash and I'll be sure to put that link in the description box below as well but I also moisturize my face and then I use my um, Becca Ever Matte Poreless Priming Perfector. And basically I use it, you know, on my T-zone, my forehead. So that way I don't have a whole lot of shine. A little bit goes a long way because if you use too much, it'll start to turn white. And so I do prefer to use this just basically over my moisturizer. Um, so that way I won't be shiny. And if you just want just a simple polish look like I got going on right now, I use my Becca. Um, I put a little bit of uh, eyeliner under my eyes, a little bit of mascara, and that's it. So I probably won't be taking, you know, no foundation and stuff like that. I know I will be taking my Becca. I may take a little bit of bronzer, um, my eyeliner, mascara, and maybe some lip gloss. And that's pretty much it. And that's really just for pictures. But honestly, if I don't take it, I'm, I'm not going to be upset about it. But uh, yeah, anyway, so I just want to come back and give you guys a few other things that I plan on taking with me that aren't necessarily in my bag already, but they are things I utilize all the time. So anyway, be right back. So anyway, I just wanted to share with you guys what I had in my bag. Um, the next video will be the things that I'm packing for her. 
um so if you're interested in that make sure you check that video out but like i said i just wanted to show you guys some of the things that um i decided to pack this time around um i'll also come back with another video of things that my husband is going to pack as well um last time he didn't really feel the need to have to pack a bag and he kind of really didn't need it because we stayed about 10 minutes away from the hospital this time we are a little bit further away and so it's a lot more difficult to just say oh i'm gonna run home and get whatever i need so i'll actually share with you guys what he's decided to pack in his bag um but those are going to be for other videos so again this is what's in mama's bag um yeah if you've got some tips or suggestions or different things you're going to put in your bag feel free to leave a comment um below and as always i'll be sure to try and answer each and every one of them and as always we sincerely thank you for liking watching and subscribing and most importantly telling a friend and we will see you on the next video until then take care of yourself and we'll talk to you soon Bye bye Thank you.